favorite place to fly is anywhere without painting. Tom Cooper, uh, number four on the takeoff roll as we get our upper flight up. The first of our Alpha flight coming in from the left, and that is Eddie Doyle in the Super Cub. So they're going to be, he's going to be coming in here, holding the aircraft about 35 to 45 miles an hour into the wind. Let's see if he can put down a good landing for the beginning of our 2018 EAA Stolen Competition. Alpha number two inbound from the left now, and that is Joe Edwards in the Super Legend XP from Austin, Arkansas. Looks like a cup, but it actually is a factory built by American legend holding it there. Let's see if we put down a good landing. Nope, that is a DQ. So if the mains land before the line, that is a DQ. And obviously they uh, obviously get TQ for that run. And uh, I did make a quick mistake last night. I do want to correct myself for this evening that if the tailwheel touches before that particular line, that is okay. That is good. That's still scorable. It's just the main gear is what we're looking for as uh, we breathe. Corey Robin putting it down another DQ due to the due to the main sitting right before the main line. As I mentioned, not many limitations in what you can do to modify your aircraft to participate in the competition. We just ask the helicopters stay out as they are the world's uh, leading uh, competitor in terms of the shortest takeoff and landing distance. Tom Ford coming in now at his Super Cup. Hold it just a few feet above the ground, put it down right past the line. That should be a good landing. We'll see what his distance is here this evening. We wait from the judges there and uh, coming in right now, Kevin Quinn. One to fifty-two. One one nine. One one nine. One one nine. Well now these guys are toned in with the wind. A little bit of wind out of the northwest here tonight. So they're going to be getting it toned in. Obviously we're working towards a uh, more of a northern departure route as uh, we currently get our alpha flight in to judge our takeoffs this evening. Eddie Doyle up on the line first. You'll notice he's going to sit there, hold the brakes, push the power up. Tail will come up, the wheel brakes off. Get that aircraft off the ground by dumping a whole boatload of flat on the fly. participating as part of our Bravo flight in just 59 feet. Eddie Doyle leading the pack here for our landing. Let's keep an eye on it. 
Unfortunately, a DQ because of the mains before the line. Joe Edwards coming in now, 40 years of backcountry experience down in Arkansas, also participated in our Texas Stole Roundup last year. Has approximately 200 total hours of stole in a Oh, another DQ, unfortunately. Obviously, when you're working around that uh, airspeed around about 35, 40 knots, obviously any change of the wind can make a huge difference. Just a couple knots can make a huge difference. And of course, these guys are trying to get in tune with that wind. As, uh, Coley Robin and his Carbon Cup EX, he likes to call the ghost. It's good. Kevin Quinn in the Carbon Cub. Let's see if he puts down a good one. Indeed. 133 feet for Tom Ford. We'll get the numbers for Kevin Quinn here in just a couple seconds. Now you'll notice all of our crew out there here this evening, all of them volunteering, including a lot of hard work into making this invitational possible here at the Imperial Aircraft Association. And uh, all of them are out there. They've actually got uh, a variety of pink measures and ice sites. And as you see all the cones out there, those are divided up as well in terms of the length. And as I mentioned, the combination of both takeoff and landing. You can't land before the line. The mains cannot touch before that main line. They can make a DQ. Other than that, it's actually pretty simple. 131 feet for Kevin Quinn. And uh, of course, we've got all of our different classes put together in terms by kind of weight, power plants, and similar performance. Ladies and gentlemen, as our Alpha class clears left, give our Alpha pilots a nice round of applause. <laughs> Setting up now for our Bravo class, currently up on the line. Getting set up to kick off our Bravo class here tonight. Al Stockman, his Rams S7S. He calls this airplane the Lawnmower. Somewhere around 10,000 feet. So that guy certainly knows how to do it. 
Trent Palmer in the kit box. You know, when you watch these guys and you, you kind of watch these guys in a slow flight, all they do is speak in slow flight, especially when they're down low like this. And uh, it's all about energy management. They're right there on the cusp, the edge of the envelope, as they bring it in somewhere around maybe 40 miles an hour, maybe 35 in some cases. Oh, an unfortunate DQ for Greg and Swindle and Ram S7. I asked him what his normal aircraft pattern speed, he's like, eh, whatever, somewhere between 50 and 100 miles an hour. Steve last night put down a landing of 110 feet. Let's listen in to see what the distance was tonight. 101. Many of you are probably quite familiar with that engine. A kiddo prop. 31-inch bush wheels and uh, all sorts of different modifications. He's got 21 years of total flight experience. He says when he's not out competing in this airplane, this is the family U-Haul, it's the family dirt bike, and uh, he certainly gets around. No, no point no. And uh, up on with me here on the announcer stand as uh, we're about to launch Hal Stockman once again. Corey and Robin, you just flew your airplane to call the Ghost to Carbon Club GX. Put down some quick numbers, I think. Look for Trent Pumper and hit that subscribe button right now. He does a really quick video series on YouTube. He was featured yesterday, I think. Obviously, of course, the fun fly zone all about sharing the passion of flight. That's right, and that's what the Flying Cowboys is all about. Here's Rick Swayman to take up the throw. Rick Swayman is a pleasure. He's got a very, very fun airplane. He quickly can fly over there in Ohio. He's got a good video series he put out a few years ago. And here's Steve Henry once again. That's a good landing, great landing by Hal Stockman. Oh, the judges are delivered. That was a scratch or not? One zero six. One hundred and six feet. Trent Palmer here on his final approach. In the Freedom Fox. That's good. Trent Palmer is one of those guys that uh, has that one, one, six, 116. Wow, 116 feet. You know, it's, it's, right there, boy. it's so fun to watch these guys. You know, I'm kind of an air show afterburner jet type of guy. I had the opportunity recently to actually fly back seat you know, T-33. And we were sitting up there at 22,000 feet as we watch uh, Ray come on back in. But we were up there and he's like, you know how cool it would be to go lay on that sandbar down there? And I'm like, that would be pretty cool. So even even the naval aviator, former naval aviators are like, hey, that's a cool flying. Yeah. 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 Sandbar all the way from Reno, Nevada to Oshkosh, Wisconsin. All right, here comes Steve Henry once again. In the Highlander. In that beautiful, look at that, high deck angle, high angle of attack. He calls it the Yeehaw. Oh, I think that was a scratch, unfortunately. Wow, that was really fantastic. 75 feet. 75 feet. That, that is a Valdez winning number right there. <laughs> Very cool. I know since these guys are up and going, there's Jay. Really getting the feel for it. Jay's got a great... Great finesse with his aircraft. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, the next round is really special. This is where 
the skill really comes into play with these heavy aircraft. For sure. We're calling these the heavies. This is our Charlie class and uh, up front leading the class right now, Riley Kennedy and his Cessna 180. Charlie 2 CC Pocock, he's from South Africa flying his uh, Cessna 170 aircraft. Followed by Jim Stevenson in the Cessna 170. Clint Boosnitz as well, and uh, there at the end, kind of the star of the weekend, more or less, Mike Patey in that 750 horsepower PT6 powered Polish wheel gun. Yeah, they got the key range the 680 horsepower. Oh, it's okay. the propeller shaft. It's up with the high horsepower. Yeah. 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 Nice and low to the ground and pull it up so we have that energy to make it over those trees. You'll notice in front of those helicopters, we've got Tom Ford and Kevin Quinn. They're on the ground and they can hear you. They're filming their fucking CC book on his takeout roll right now. Let's give them a round of applause. Kevin Quinn and Tom Ford get the award. Give me the award for the guy who's the shortest distance to be here. He's from uh, Oregon, Wisconsin, which is 47 miles. Yeah, he is the hometown favorite. So Jim is here and he's here to win in the heavy category. There you go. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's Jason Sneed. Last year, he won the Cessna 170. We got Clint over here in the second that was a good takeoff. Kind of a very weird, pretty great aircraft. Wow. It turns out to be a great aircraft. And we're lining up tight down. Just takes your breath away. Let's go. Just be quiet. You know what? I'm going to pull the music down. Let's take a watch. And Mike Payne and the Polish Wilson, he calls. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you have to see that to believe it. Let's give Mike Payne a round of applause. Yes. I've got my Instagram up here, and I want Mike to see everybody going crazy. But one of the things we did is to earn that name Flying Cowboys is we volunteered for ranchers. If they have lost cattle, as it were. Oh sure. You go out, sure. You can ride on a horse for days and find try and find cattle. And right. Aircraft, find them now and now. So that's wow. kind of how we got the name Flying Cowboys. We kind of extended that into an aviation advocacy. Sure. And uh, we just love sharing our passion for aviation. Here's CeCe Pocock bringing in that beautiful 170. Ooh, a big old backfire. <laughs> That is a great <laughs> tail up all the way to the very last inch. Uh, now, CC's one of a, a pretty world renowned Bush pilot from Nevada, so uh, you can certainly look him up. A lot of cool material on CC on the stuff he's been doing all over the world. And as, as you're here throughout the week, he's actually teaching several forums on the subject as well. So very look cool. up CC Pocock on your Air Venture app and check him out. Here comes Jim on his final approach. He'll be behind the power curve just using that throttle to keep the aircraft in the air. And beautiful touchdown. That was fantastic. Jim Stevenson on that. Okay. All right. So Kevin's uh, live on Facebook. How many people are watching on Facebook now in addition to the people in the crowd? <laughs> well, look at this crowd. Five hundred and twenty people. Here's Clint in a Cessna Cup. He's going to drag it in. I think Clint maybe was a little confused on where the coach which, which the particular line yeah. was, right? It's getting a little dark. By Mike uh -huh. Patey. Now Mike Patey's kind of a unique individual. He holds several world records, including one that former world-renowned pilot. There's a transcontinental record. Anybody in history buff? Who built the Spruce Goose? Anybody? Oh my God! Look at that on the left landing roll. That aircraft is so minute. I kind of feel bad for everybody else because you're this big giant full airplane until Mike finished Draco. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the coolness factor for, for sure. He's actually even, I think, raced out at the Reno Air Races and has done all sorts of different types of sport flying. Yeah, he does a lot of uh, uh, cross country races. He's a two time champion of the Air Venture Cup the last two years. He didn't compete this year because he was so passionate about bush flying, he put Draco together sure, this year. Sure, sure. Now, something probably important to know is that, again, you know, a lot of the aircraft out here, probably somewhere, you know, like the EPA, you know, down the He's probably sitting in about 2,800 pounds right there. Wow. 
absolutely fantastic. And, and getting the performance that we're getting tonight is, you know, on par with some of the other aircraft. It is a giant yeah. It's right, right before air bank. So yeah, the first thing yeah. we did is brought it over. Yeah, you guys got, like, 50 airplanes to get out, like, last Monday, right? Absolutely, and they, they gave them the time to fly off, flew it off, and immediately got a dodge dodge. We're really excited to get it to the back country. Oh, sure. Oh, it's going to be fun. Oh, yeah. Of this aircraft, where is the best place for them to go online? We all have YouTube channels. You're going to want to look for flyingcowboys.com. We've got Trent Hoffman, who's on YouTube, Corey Robin, who's on YouTube, and that's been doing the last couple of days. It's just exploding. But uh, Mike Katie's got a fantastic channel. Mark Katie's got a fantastic channel. Jason C. All of us have. Oh, sure. Well, I'm sure it's, it's, it's not hard with the cool flying you guys do, especially in the, in the back country and some of the cool locations you guys are able to get to with these airplanes. Right. And we, we like to stress the safety aspect of it. Uh, one of the things we do is practice, 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 sure. and then practice again. Well, as they say, you know, practically, you know, repetition is the mother of all skills, you know, and obviously getting proficient with those like very important in these competitions. Now, as he throttles it up to the tip, the tip of the nipple looks like they're about to leave it off the ground. Now, it's very supportive, but we've actually limited his takeoff climb angle to less than 30 degrees. That's true, because we don't have an active aerobatic box like we have at airship. Correct. So he's actually limited to only doing about 30 degrees, but I'm sure this thing will probably do 45, maybe 50. It's me hot, and I am really excited about the Paradigm uh, paramotor team that's about to come up after we recover these last aircraft. They put on a magnificent uh, performance last night, and uh, we're certainly looking forward to having a bunch of great entertainment here at the conclusion of our Stoll Invitational. Riley Kennedy put down a pretty solid uh, lights and all kinds of spectacular aerobatics with their RC airplanes. All well. parts of our 2018 Twilight Flight Fest here at the Fun Flies of CC making his way in now in the Cessna 170. You let me know during the brief today, he's actually got uh, the most lowest performing engines, the stock 145 horsepower. And that just goes to show the skill level in all these, air these aircraft. All right, here comes Jim. I just love looking at airplanes fly. You know, it, it doesn't, it never gets old. Jim Stevenson from Oregon, Wisconsin. Oh, you know, that's what we call a greaser. A greaser. <laughs> he did not have any bounce in that way. Oh, here comes Clint with Cessnica. This is a very unique aircraft. If you make your way down to the Stoll Corral, this is a must-see. Very, very unique, different. You can tell the engineering that went into this aircraft, too. There's big ones and there's small ones, and this is definitely in that category. And that worked all right. Our last Stoll landing of the evening. Here comes my baby, Draco. Get your cameras on to this. How cool. I'm baffled by the performance of that. I actually have about 4,000 hours in Wilgus. Yeah, yeah. And that is amazing. That's great. Absolutely spectacular. We sure love flying for it. I'm for it. Please hit that subscribe button on my YouTube channel. And, uh, oh, they're going to do one more? Oh, the focus has given us permission to do one more run of scope. This is Oshkosh. I don't think there's a single soul of the crap they complain about that. <laughs> There's Riley Kennedy.
Look at it. It looks like it's just getting ready to leap off the ground when those knuckles start collapsing. Wow, that was just over there. Oh, 1123. Wow. That's right. We cannot wait. We're glad to have a day off tomorrow. Sure, sure. But uh, we are excited every day we get to perform here and do this demonstration and really expose a lot of people into the, the stole aircraft, uh, the capabilities, the ability to take these things into the backcountry and really enjoy what the world has to offer. You connect with nature in a different way with a bush plane than you do in a typical aircraft. Look at that beautiful landing by Riley Kennedy. Oh, Cece just nails that landing. Beautiful. Keeping the tail up every inch of the way. All right, here's Jam and his beautiful Cessna 170B. This is one of those certified aircraft that we mentioned before. Beautiful landing. Nice. Very cool. This is going to make a big difference for you guys. Yeah, you know, and uh, I'm not used to this very thick air down here. Oh, so sure, so sure. It's a bit of a challenge I'm used to flying my, my jets. The altitudes are typically above 7,000 feet in Utah wow. in the summertime. So here comes Clint. Looks like he's going to see the right line this time. Fantastic landing. I think it's a good one. Right on the line. About 75% of all his flight time down low in the snow. That's right. 147. All right. Here comes Mike Dane and Draco. <laughs> Those lights are almost blinding. <laughs> I am catching my. He'll let you know. He's here. He'll let you know. <laughs> I've got to go back down to my airplane and tie it down before Draco gets there. Yeah, for sure. Ladies and gentlemen, you want a round of applause to all the competitors here at the 2018 Twilight Flight Fest. 